手丢驴，手丢驴，手丢驴，手丢，手丢驴，驴跟这个打一下，哎，手丢驴，哎。Hi, and welcome back to the Flying Monk Talk Show. I'm Alex Cosma, and I'm joined today by Gordon Zhou from Hong Kong. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Gordon. Thank you. Um, Gordon is a student and teacher of Song family Xing Yichuan, and he studies in uh, mainland China for many years now with um, the experts of uh, the Song family. And he's here today to talk about his practice of martial arts and also a little bit about his uh, yogic practice yes. and some other very interesting topics about life. So we are uh, very happy to have you here today, Gordon. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. Uh, my family originally is from Shanghai. Um, they moved to Hong Kong during the Cultural Revolution and I was born and grew up in Hong Kong. Um, I, my first experience to martial arts was in judo. Um, at that time, my parents forced me. They thought uh, a boy should have know some uh, method of self-defense. And a manager in my father's company was a black belt. I think a fourth or fifth down uh, black belt in judo. So they put me in judo lessons, and I used to hate it. Because I was very small as a child, and I keep getting thrown and getting locked under bigger kids. Um, from then on, I studied um, uh, Taekwondo um, and then Karate. Uh, and then I felt uh, being Chinese, I wanted to move back into Chinese styles of um, uh, martial arts. So um, I did a little bit of, uh, well, actually, uh, ironically, with an American who teaches Kampo Karate, which is uh, based on Chinese style. Um, then after, into Tai Chi, uh, Bagua, and finally into Xing Yi. And at the moment, uh, Xing Yi is my favorite style. Uh, it's the style I practice the most, along with uh, some Tai Chi and a little bit of Bagua. Yeah. I started training in Xing Yi with my, one of my Tai Chi teachers. Uh, it was a Hebei style uh, Tai Chi, uh, Xing Yi. Uh, and then uh, with my Bagua teacher, I went to his uh, studio and uh, one time I saw a poster uh, that he had of master, my master now, uh, Song Guang Hua. Uh, and the thought just occurred to my mind, like that his postures look very beautiful. And I just had this uh, thought that if I can train with him, um, I would really be happy and um, like to. Um, and then I just discarded the thought because I thought he's in China. There's no way I can uh, find him. So uh, that was a couple of years earlier. And then uh, a teacher, um, one of, one of the teachers I knew, uh, called me up, asked me if I'm. In, he knew I practicing Xing Yi, so asked me if um, I would be interested in uh, going on a trip to uh, Shanxi Province to Tai. Uh, tai, tai Gu in San, Shanxi, which is where Xing Yi basically developed. So I was very interested. I went there. Then I met this uh, old gentleman. Uh, my first impression was he was a very traditional, very nice. The feeling I get is a very nice, honest, decent uh, gentleman. And later on, I realized he was the man uh, in, the, in the poster. And I was there. Um, I liked the practice very much. 
So um, I asked them if I can come back and train with them, and they say yes, of course. And so a few months later, I made my first trip to Shanxi. <laughs> Um, at that time, my first trip from the airport to there to Taigu, which is where um, Xing Yi basically was uh, uh, started, um, it took uh, about a it was about a four hour journey by car. Uh, part of the way was not even paved; it was dirt roads. Uh, but nowadays, they've completed the, the freeway system, so now it's a much quicker trip for me. It takes only about an hour from the airport now. I've been back many times. Uh, I try to go as often as I can, uh, usually for maybe three or four times per year. And uh, every, every time I go, it's um, quite intense training uh, from the moment we wake up throughout the morning, uh, a break for lunch and a short break after lunch and then training again until dinner time, and sometimes in the evening too. Uh, the home was passed down to uh, Grandmaster uh, from his uh, grandfather, and the family has trained in that, um, in that home uh, for, for now, it's, I think it's the fourth generation. Um, it's a perfectly sized courtyard, it's a traditional a uh, four-sided Chinese courtyard house. So the courtyard in the middle somehow is perfectly shaped and sized for the training. And I just love training there. Uh, the style was founded by Song Shirong and Song Shida, uh, two brothers uh, who study with Li Lolan uh, in Taigu. Uh, and they basically they studied with him for I think about 10 years over 10 years and um, basically they've um, taken the Xing Yi uh, material and they've incorporated and added their own understanding of internal martial arts of internal power generation um, the story was uh, the brothers were passed a, uh, a book uh, by one of their good friends who worked in the uh, uh, imperial palace. He found this book lying around in the library and uh, he thought it was very interesting but he couldn't quite understand everything. So he didn't want this book to be sitting there and being wasted. So he made a copy of this book and passed it to the uh, Song brothers. Uh, hoping that they can make use of it. And the Song brothers really study the material there uh, and combine it with their own understanding um, of Xing Yi. And they study also Tai Chi and Ba Gua. So they, um, they incorporated aspects of Tai Chi Ba Gua into their um, very uh, unique Song style uh, Xing Yi Chun. And the Song style um, actually the power they generate is uh, a bit different from other styles of Xing Yi Chuan. It's more of a, the quality, it has a more of a internal and springy quality um, that um, is, from what I've seen, is quite different from other styles. Um, they really emphasize very much the internal Nei Gong internal uh, power development and generation. So the style is based on um, this book, which is called the uh, Nei Gong Si Jing, uh, which is, can be translated as the internal, uh, the four classics of internal uh, training. Uh, they've also incorporated uh, the uh, Yi Jing Jing, uh, which is another uh, internal uh, exercise into the style. So basically they've 
they learn the uh, Xingyi style, and then they've incorporated um, particular theories of power generation into the Xingyi style, while keeping all the Xingyi forms and applications and uh, strategies, but with a very different uh, method of power generation. The power generation is totally different. Uh, the power generation in Song style, it really emphasizes using the Dan Tian, uh, using the, the breath. The uh, particular breath we use is called the reverse breathing or the pre-heaven breath, um, which is uh, it's not unique to the system. Uh, I think many, many internal styles all use that system. Uh, so the, the breath and the dantian and the, uh, the whole body is used uh, to develop this power. <laughs> Uh, in the hotel, um, I think you're referring to uh, Grandmaster is very nice. Uh, one time I went training, the other students left uh, to go on sightseeing trip. Uh, I'm so focused on the training, I didn't want to go on the sightseeing trip. So uh, his son uh, took the, the other students um, on the trip and I was at the uh, thing at the uh, hotel by myself. So when I woke up, um, when I woke up, there was a knock on my, on my door, and Grandmaster actually, he's 74 years old now. That was uh, a couple of years ago. So he actually walked from his home to, to my hotel to uh, walk with me over, uh, bring me back to his home. Uh, so in the elevator, it's a three-level hotel. He said, watch this, and then he did a uh, fudging, a, a pitron, and the whole elevator just shook from the uh, pow force and power of the energy. Because when we fudging, the, the power travels from our body uh, down our legs to our feet into the ground, and you get the power rebounding up from the ground. So in this Chinese-made elevator, which was not very sturdy, the whole elevator just sh vibrated and shook. No, no stepping, no jumping, just on the spot, stationary. Yeah, so he said, and he said, no, it's nothing special, like um, all our disciples can do that, does that, and even I will be able to, to, to express that uh, one day. stays very true to traditional Hebei, uh, traditional Xingyi fighting strategy, which as um, I understand it, uh, there's no, almost no or very little grappling, uh, touching involved. The strategy in Xingyi is very um, straight and direct. Uh, you touch and you strike. Uh, if people strike you, you block and strike. Uh, together simultaneously. Uh, so we don't do uh, pushing hands training or anything like that. Although I do believe the body structure we develop is very uh, similar to push hands training, the whole body structure. So I, I suppose it can be applied that way. But in our training for application, we mostly do not train in those aspects. The strategy is very quick just touch and strike. So any self-defense is based on a strike. Um, the whole strategy in Song style is to de develop uh, enough power and speed. Uh, power is tied to speed. Uh, so enough power and speed to be able to strike, hopefully, um, before the other person is able to touch you or, or uh, try to stick to you.
uh, it's the whole thing is to develop this short penetrating strike. Uh, so the traditional 12 animals, uh, we do have uh, a, f a few of the animals, um, the way we practice it is slightly different, distinctive from other styles. So once you see, for example, the dragon, um, it's very distinctive to our dragon, it's very distinctive to our style. So once you see uh, a practici practitioner practice the, the dragon, um, you can tell they're doing uh, our song, song style. Uh, of Xing Yi. Uh, the spear training is uh, very, very important. Uh, um, nowadays, not so much as a fighting tool, of course, but to develop the power. Uh, the internal power. Uh, because of the heaviness of the spear, uh, it helps you develop a more robust, a deeper internal power. So yes, it is very important. And you mentioned the stepping. We do have, um, because whatever amount of power you develop is no use if you cannot, uh, at times you still, no matter how powerful you are, you have to avoid your uh, opponent. Uh, and at times you have to close the distance. So the stepping and the footwork is very critical too, because no matter what power you develop, you cannot hit your opponent if you cannot get to a certain position versus your opponent. So that is also a very important part of the, uh, the training. But it's a easy, compared to developing the internal power, it's relatively straightforward and an easy process to understand and to do. The, the, the hard part is understanding the internal, the particular song style internal power um, and how it's generated. It took me quite a number of years going, going around in circles and loops to be finally able, hopefully finally now able to understand how that power is generated. Um, and it's, it is entirely not by using hard muscular physical force. Uh, it's hard to, it's really hard, it's like a painting, it's hard to put into words uh, to describe uh, until you felt it. Once you felt it, um, you understand it. Um, it's using more the tendons to develop the power. Uh, it's using the, using the breath, the dantian, the intention is very important. Um, to develop this uh, internal power. On my very go. first uh, meeting, that trip I, I went uh, went uh, to see him, I asked him to um, to hit me. Uh, because in martial arts, you can learn a lot from the way your master strikes you. Uh, each punch you strike has a very distinctive quality. Uh, so I asked him to to hit me, and luckily he he, he hit me. But um, on my um, on my uh, on my arm my, on my upper arm, so that didn't felt nearly as bad. But it still felt like there was this shock that goes into my body. And then I actually made a video uh, recording of that. And uh, that evening when I looked at the recording, like I didn't. Uh, from the strike, I didn't bounce away, like my body was vibrating, was uh, in, uh, oscillating away from from the punch. So quite strange. Yes.
that that one uh, that actually felt very very bad <laughs> uh, I I felt like vomiting or throwing up for almost half an hour an hour afterwards and then I finally went to sleep now, it was late at night and the next morning when I woke up I finally felt better uh, and it wasn't near full power uh, he just uh, I, I've been pleading with him to hit me uh, for a long time and he finally relented and he hit me with a, uh, a very small bun a bun churn a uh, bun punch uh, it was um, uh, it's hard to describe the feeling um, externally like on my skin superficially it didn't hurt but internally uh, it felt very upsetting um, and I can imagine how powerful it can be if he used uh, full force the reason he won't try on me was uh, uh, you know it's very dangerous he can really uh, injure somebody and you can you can see in the video like just uh, instinctively I was holding my my chest where he hit uh, because it just felt so powerful and so bad and then when you see him strike it looks like as if he's not using any uh, strength at all yeah and the distance uh, from the fist um, to my body that it travels is very very short so I don't know I can imagine that can be very useful in a self-defense situation but I do think the, um, the style itself uh, traditional as it's been practiced uh, as it's been proven in history previously uh, as a fighting art is very very uh, good uh, um, but each practitioner uh, during different periods of time emphasizes different aspects of it. But it is a martial arts, we do keep that aspect alive. I mean, if you practice a martial art without the fighting aspect, it becomes a dance, it becomes something else. To develop the power and the jing, you do have to keep the application in mind. Uh, personally, I'm more interested, much more interested, in the health aspects. And there's also a, a sort of spiritual aspect to the internal martial art practice, which personally I'm more interested in too. It might be an emergency, you have to defend yourself, but it's better usually not to fight, um, you get into lots of trouble. <laughs>
and then after that lake, we end up in front of the whole fleet. And in that particular instance, we won. <laughs> so it's to me, it's developing the spiritual and the intuitive aspects of all this, mm. which is much more important than the fighting aspect. Uh, um, I, I see yoga and the internal martial arts as two different paths up to the same peak of the mountain. Uh, it's just taking two different paths. Martial arts perhaps start from a point of violence and you move into, ultimately, all the great masters move into from violence into non-violence. From yoga, you start from a place perhaps of caring and love, and you move more inward into the real caring and real love. Uh, and ultimately, it's working for spiritual enlightenment. What is enlightenment? Is finding peace and happiness. And you don't have to fight to find that. Uh, I have many, uh, many very, very lucky to find all these teachers I find in, in my life. Um, when they, the, the saying they say, when the student is ready, the, the teacher appears, that really is correct. And for my path so far, that really has happened. Um, and there's another aspect. Um, there are practices in these arts which um, people call it luck, but there are practices which actually purify your energy. It purifies the energy in your body, in your system, so that you're able to... Some things in your life are meant to be yours anyways, but if you purify and um, strengthen your energy, somehow you're able to attract these things into your life much quicker than they otherwise would have. Or sometimes your energy is so wrong, they sort of prevent these things from coming into your life. And that's what most people, um, I believe, call luck. It's just what the, the world is meant for you for this lifetime. Uh, and p some people are able to attract them into your life quicker. And to me, that is not the main reason, but part of the reason for all these training, uh, for yoga, for internal martial arts, uh, and in particular, meditation. Um, that is the ultimate practice, if you can call it so. Definitely uh, quite an important component to and which Grandmaster teaches, and you can practice that anytime. Uh, uh, it's a very nice practice. Uh, some practice involves circulating the chi, but the higher aspects of meditation actually does not involve that. Um, not from the Song family, from the Song style also, but from other teachers also. The highest aspect of meditation is actually not a practice. It's purely and simply just being aware of your own being aware. So it's just being in the moment, in the now, uh, being aware of that, being where aware of where your awareness arises from. That awareness is actually the real self, is the real you or I. Um, you know, I'm and you, we're not the body, we're not even our mind. We are that spark of awareness, which is from the greater awareness or consciousness. Um, that is the whole practice, to get in touch with that. They call, you know, in the internal, in Xing Yi, we have the, f um, the three external coordinations and the three internal coordinates. Uh, the three, the internal are um, the Sheng, the spirit coordinated, coordinated with the Yi, the intention, and the intention coordinated with the Qi, which is the power uh, or life energy, and the, the, the Qi coordinate with the, uh, the strength. That's how the strength is developed. So ultimately everything arises from the, the sheng or the spirit. 
So we train a lot on intention and intention uh, I just heard a uh, I've been trying to figure out how internal martial arts becomes a spiritual training and I was listening to a talk given to, by a teacher in Hong Kong a few weeks ago and um, his theory of how it ties together is uh, intention is a lower level of spirit or consciousness. Consciousness or spirit is a high level intention. So by continuously training the chi and the intention in our practice, it actually becomes a spiritual training. Uh, for me, um, the meditation practice became, when I started it, it wasn't as difficult, I think, as some people made it out to, um, perhaps because of my many years of internal training uh, helped uh, a bit in that aspect. Thank you very much, Gordon. Thank you. Yeah.